Uh, if you are a follower of Jesus, I would encourage you to have moments of prayer where you're not talking. Hmm. Um, let God talk, which, which means you're going to have moments of prayer where you're just quiet. You know, one of the things we've been learning at Sun Valley is to pray, come Holy Spirit, mm-hmm. turn our palms up. But just sit silently in the presence of God and allow him to love you. Mm-hmm. Uh, just receive. Mm-hmm. Uh, if you want to meditate on a verse, you know, pick, pick a verse that talks about his love and just quote it and just quote it and just quote it. Say it out loud and then just dwell on it mm-hmm. or just sit there. And, dude, some of my greatest experiences in prayer have been times I've said nothing. Mm -hmm. I'm sitting by a river and it's me and God and I'm just hanging out with Abba. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm just hanging out with, with my heavenly father. Um, so that would be my counsel along those lines. Just sit in silence, just calm down, uh, and, and let him love you. Welcome to the Loving God, Loving People podcast, where we talk about what it looks like to follow Jesus in our everyday lives and how, in the end, all that matters is God and people. Here's today's episode. Well, hey, everyone. Welcome to the podcast. Chad, we're talking about relationships today, and uh, we just did a little thing for social media. What relational advice do you have for people? Let's start real broad, real generic. Uh, let's, let's go there, and then I have some specific questions I want to talk about about love well, we, but, were, we were just talking, we were going to talk about love today. Mm-hmm. We, we were just talking about social media mm-hmm. uh, before the cameras and the mics came on. And one piece of relational advice I would give everybody just to stay healthy in an emotional way mm-hmm. is if you have a social media, media post that just goes viral, mm-hmm. uh, don't read any of the comments Yep, because that will depress you. Yeah, so I have a buddy who does YouTube for a living. Like that's his job. Which ironically, when I met him, he goes, "So what do you what do you do for like your real job?" Because he knew I was a pastor, and I'm like, "No, this is it." I'm like says the YouTuber, uh, but he told me he goes, "Never read the comments." He goes, yeah. "I I learned that years ago. You never read the comments." Yeah, so I got this video right now that's kind of taken off, and the comments are just brutal. <laughs> yeah, and there's like thousands of likes, which means people like agree with what I'm saying, but it's it, it they don't even listen to the whole video. That's not even the clip. So we're not talking about not the whole the sermon. We're talking about seconds. yeah, the the tiny little snippet of the whole sermon. They don't even listen to the whole snippet. Yeah. And you know what really drives me crazy? Mm-hmm. It's when a Christian gets on there and goes, "What is this a TED talk? There was no scripture." <laughs> it's 40 <laughs> seconds of a sermon. I where so, I'm commenting on the scripture that I just read that they're unaware of. It's just like, how self-righteous are you? I heard that comment, and I thought, oh, man, this is, again, why you don't read the comments. <laughs> it's because of that right there. Because, yeah, so, my, my natural response was I wanted to, like, blast that person back and say exactly what you said. And then it's like, well, that, that doesn't accomplish anything either. Okay, so, well, let me just say something about our friendship, Robert. Yeah. If you defend me, yeah. I feel good about okay. that. <laughs> but there's, there's no way I can defend myself yeah. on social media. That's just... A losing battle. Proverbs says, uh, "You don't argue with a fool." Yeah, because that actually makes you a fool. Well, so, so the I'm, amount I'm of comments, try not to be foolish. the amount of comments versus likes. Here's here's the problem with social media. Well, there's lots of problems. I'll give I'll give you one of them. If you go, man, that's helpful, and I understand it, and I I have enough brain power that I can process and understand the context and the heart behind this. I like it. I click a button and give it a thumbs up, and then I move on. Yeah, uh, but. All the comments are everybody who wants to troll it, who wants to, you know, poke holes in it or go, hey, this, you know, th- this is why this isn't biblical or this is why this is. I had <laughs> off, off of 40 seconds with no context. OK, so sometimes I'm thinking, how bored are you people? Can we just can this be our therapy session for let's, the first part of this podcast? Let's just do that. We're off so, the rails. So I'm in I'm in Michigan last week and I'm speaking at this thing and there's, you know. Wait a second. Okay, it's the middle of the summer in Arizona. Yeah. What was the weather in Michigan? Oh, man, it was like 70s. I'm sitting outside. It's Holland, Michigan. If you've never been to Holland, Michigan, I have been to Holland, Michigan. it's gorgeous. And they yeah. have the big windmill. I, you could post pictures. People think you're actually in Holland. Like yeah. they have tulips growing everywhere. And I'm sitting outside. It's 70-something degrees. The breeze is blowing. I'm out on this you know, this uh, restaurant patio. Okay, wait a and second. And I get, I get a little chill, a little goose bump. And then it's like 115 degrees back in Arizona. Back home, yeah. I'm and, suffering and, for and Jesus. And yet... Okay, you're in this beautiful weather mm-hmm. with the beautiful windmills, yep. the American version of of Holland. Uh-huh. You're in Dutch heaven. Yep. 
and yet you're about to complain I am. about something relationally. I am. So I get done. So you know why this. that is? Because in the end, all that matters is God and people. That's right. Well, <laughs> relationships and, are everything. And to be real blunt, the whole time I'm like, I wish I was hanging out with my family because I've been traveling all summer for camps and then speaking at different things. And it, it's just been a busy summer. And the, I'm going, man, I wish I was home. Like I'm I'm a homesick junior hire yeah. speaking to a bunch of homesick junior hires there in Holland, Michigan. And so there's, I don't know, maybe a thousand junior hires and I'm preaching the gospel and, and see a ton of these kids say yes to following Jesus. It's incredible. Well, before I get up to do that, they play this little game where they have lost and found. And so you pull stuff out of the lost and found bag and then you have to preach a 30 second sermon. It's called preach it. And it's just a fun, like get to know the speaker game. So we're doing that. And I get done, and it, we're just laughing about stuff. You know, it's just goofy. And uh, and then I leave, and then one, one of the, the workers comes up, and he goes, and he's, you know, in Bible college or seminary or whatever. Oh, no. Yeah, and he walks up to me. He goes, hey, you're the third speaker that's preached heresy on this tour or whatever. And I'm like, what? And then he starts talking, and he, and he took one little bit of what I said in a 30-second game and he took that out of context and went, this is heresy because you're teaching partialism about the Trinity. I did the one times one times one equals one. It was a thing. And I talked about the interconnectedness of God, but the thing had parts. And so he's like, you taught that God is three different things instead of one. I'm like, well, actually he I, is. Yeah. And I couldn't even, I couldn't even like have a conversation because I was just like, I just want to punch this guy in the throat. <laughs> and I realized, okay, Robert, you're about to preach the gospel. Calm down and just ignore it. But... Okay. Let me, let me tell you what I'm learning in those scenarios. Yeah. Because it happens to me all the time. Yeah. Especially, especially with somebody that's in Bible college mm -hmm. and doesn't even know what today is, mm -hmm. right? They're just so heavenly minded. They're no earthly good. Um, <laughs> I do one or two things. I either say nothing and just stare at them and walk <laughs> off. This is like recent. I yeah. used to not do this. I tried to be, you know, nice. And then God's teaching me, don't be nice anymore. Be kind, but don't yep. be nice, right? Yep. So um, nice is when you're, you know, oh, bless your heart. But mm -hmm. in the back of your mind, you're thinking you're an idiot. Mm -hmm. Just don't even respond. So I either just walk off. Because that's what Jesus would do, mm -hmm. right? When people were being ridiculous. Shake the dust off the sandal and move on. What? How many <laughs> times does he just walk through the crowd? Yep. You know, he doesn't even respond. And the other thing is I'll just say, you know, I'll pray about that. <laughs> and then I walk off. So th mm -hmm. those, those are my two yeah. responses. Anyhow, so uh, sorry. Thanks that, for the feedback. This was I'll good. pray about that. This was good therapy. Let's shift gears. Which means I'm lying. I'm 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 lying. Yeah. I'm not going to pray about that. Yeah. I'm, I'm going to pray for that person and ask God to help him not be an idiot anymore. Well, if anybody's learned anything in the first five minutes of the podcast today, it's that pastors are human, just like everybody else, and it's easy to get frustrated, and it's hard to do exactly what Jesus would do in every scenario. But to your point, he is the example we want to follow. And if Jesus goes, hey, this crowd wants to throw me off the cliff, and they're all against me because I just stood up and said, hey, Isaiah was fulfilled in your hearing today, and they're going to throw me off the precipice at Nazareth, I'm just going to walk through the crowd. Now, he gets to do the, the Jesus thing where they're probably going, where'd Jesus go? How did we miss him? Like, he just supernaturally, it's not his time. So he walks through the crowd and leaves. Um, but yeah, that's the example we want to follow. Well, where we started was talking about relationships and <laughs> I, I brought up social media. <laughs> I think the bottom line on that one is social media is not helping us in the art of relationships. No. It, it's actually hurting us and it, it's taking us the wrong direction. So perhaps the pastoral word today on that one is uh, beware the pitfalls of social media. Mm -hmm. And for me, I, I'm not going to read I'm not going to read comments. Yeah. So, well, just, and just I to just... remind us, social media, this is a brand new phenomenon in the history of humankind. Oh, yeah. To where anybody can drive by comment without any context, any relationship from any part of the world. It is so different than, than what we were designed for. And so, of course, there's going to be pitfalls. Of course, there's going to be things that we realize as time goes on. Hey, remember when social media became a thing and how bad that was for us? And mm. we're just now learning how detrimental it is. They, there's recent studies with teenagers on just how damaging psychologically social media has been for teenagers. And even some of the studies that have come out, some of the social media organizations are now finally acknowledging they've been squashing it down. And now they're going, yeah, Facebook's really bad for kids. Instagram's really bad for kids. TikTok's really bad for kids. And now they're starting to at least acknowledge it and going, we need to do something to help make it less damaging. Not not damaging, but less damaging. So, Well, I talked about it this past weekend at, uh, at church as we started our Art of Relationships series. Uh, loneliness is increasing. Mm -hmm. It's become an epidemic. Mm -hmm. um, right at six out of 10 uh, adults in America are saying they regularly experience feelings of profound loneliness. Yeah. There's a minister of loneliness and a whole department, governmental department now in Great Britain. Japan has done the same thing. Mm -hmm. 
So I don't think social media is helping us with our loneliness. And I, I do think that we need to learn again how to connect in a real way uh, with people around us because back where we started, until we chased all those rabbits. <laughs> Thanks for the therapy, by uh, the way. Because the quality of our lives will be determined by the quality of our relationships. Mm-hmm. Um, relationships are what life is about, which is why you can be in Holland, Holland Michigan, mm-hmm. um, in 72 degree, beautiful mm-hmm. weather, mm-hmm. knowing back home it's 115 degrees, and yet you want to be back home because yeah. that's where your family that's is. That's right. Because that's what life's about. It's about relationships. And there's a there's a difference between being seen and being seen. So there's, okay, I posted something and people saw it versus you you talked about this intimacy is into me see like actually seeing and and to go all nerd for a second you know an avatar the whole like i see you <laughs> I, and it's <laughs> and it and it it means i see into you like i see who you are who god's made you to be good bad the flaws everything and i i love you for who you are that is so different than what social media offers you can be seen like yeah you're on a scroll on somebody's thing and they saw what you ate for breakfast or they saw that you were at this place, but they're not seeing into you. They're just seeing a facade of you. Mm. And it's, it's, it's promising one thing, but it doesn't deliver. Yeah. So flip side. So all technology can be used for good or can be used for mm-hmm. evil. Um, the internet can be used to proclaim the gospel That's right. to help people meet, no follow, meet, no and follow Jesus. It can also uh, degrade people. Mm-hmm. Um, and cause people to be addicted to their own lusts and desires. It can destroy uh, Mm self-image. On the flip side, you can also look up things that help you with your Mm -hmm. self-image and help you honor and respect people. So like all things, the technology, social media itself is neutral. The problem is we all have a heart problem. That's right. And these things can compound the realities of our heart problems. That's right. It's, It's a... Anytime we have influence in any sphere, with social media, there is a level of influence. It's, it's how do you leverage that influence? And, and what are you glorifying with that influence? Are mm-hmm. you glorifying yourself? Are you glorifying God? What is it that you're seeking to get with that influence? Are you trying to seek things that you think will satisfy your soul? Um, to your point, there's a lot of stuff that's just for, uh, I'm going to talk to, to guys specifically on social media that is geared to get our attention that is really unhealthy in the in the realm of like sexual sin or visual. I mean, there's stuff out on every platform. Um, part of the reason why I stay off of social media as much as I possibly can is because I know that's a temptation for me. And that's a draw to go, oh, man, well, this person has interest or whatever. And wow, that person's beautiful. And it's just this visual thing that's promising, hey, I'm going to deliver this, this need for your soul. But it doesn't. And it actually leaves you thirsty and wanting more. And so... Um, yeah, there's a lot of pitfalls and a lot of things to be aware of in social media. Well, immediately, as soon as you, you know, sign up for that account, there's a computer somewhere. Going, what's your age? Oh, that's what's a, your gender? What's your yeah? That's a 40 year old man. Mm-hmm. Um, so let's send him these images, mm-hmm. right? Um, yeah. So that's just immediate. And even if you block those things, they figure out how to how to get around them mm-hmm. uh, and send you other things. So so. Yeah, so, so just beware. I yeah. mean, back to what we said earlier, beware uh, of social media. Beware of those kinds of things. So this is connected to where we're going, I promise. Um, as we're talking about receiving love, our desire as human beings, we we have built into the core of our souls a desire to give and receive love. That's part mm-hmm. of how God's designed us. If you go back to Genesis, God created us not to, not to get love, but to give love. And so we're designed to receive love. Yet there's all these things in our society, in our world that promise, hey, this is gonna this is gonna love you back. This is gonna fill that void. Things like money. Well, money won't love you back. Uh, things like prestige or title or whatever. All these things that we think will love us won't actually love us. So, Chad, talk to us about how do we actually? There's this void inside of us desiring love. How do we fill that void? Um, not in a not in a false counterfeit way, but in a true way that actually satisfies the desires of the soul. Well, you you said it, but you said it quickly. Yeah. And I don't, I don't, just in case it wasn't clear. So when God created human beings, um, you know, as far as we know, the first two, right, were Adam and Eve. Mm-hmm. There's some poetry there in the first chapter, second 
chapter of Genesis. So it's hard to know what is what is the science lab and mm-hmm. what is poetry to help us understand exactly who God is. I have a thought on that, by the way, if we want to go there. but Well, that could take us really down a rabbit hole. <laughs> yeah. But but just know that that first chapter, um, especially in creation, is actually a poem. Um, and there's lots of rhythms and rhymes and mm-hmm. fascinating things in the original Hebrew there. And mirrors and parallels. And there's yeah. a lot of beauty to it. If if it's, you studied the poetry of Genesis, by the way, and that and that creation narrative, um, Moses had help. <laughs> he, he did not come well, up with that on his own. It is the, it is one of the most. I just studied this a little bit, and then listened to some podcasts. It is one of the most complex pieces of literature. One of the most complex pieces of literature that's ever been written. Mm-hmm. It is profoundly when you understand the Hebrew side of it. Uh, beautiful and brilliant, deep, deep and deep, yes. rich, and and there's stuff even and complicated, frankly. Yeah. And it's not a science document. No, it's not a science lab. Yet at the same time, there are things that we're discovering now in astronomy and all of that that we're going and you know theory of where did time and space begin and all of that. And it's like, wow, it sounds a lot like Genesis one. And yeah, <laughs> and this yeah. ancient Hebrew guy wrote this down that God yeah. reveals to him. So, so let's just do a little teaser. Yeah. So it could be that some atomic particles are actually referenced in Genesis mm-hmm. one. So mm-hmm. let's just throw that out there yes. and then we'll come back to it in yeah. another <laughs> podcast. But, but here's the point. So, okay. So what's the point of Genesis one? If it's not a science lab, here's the point. Uh, God is good. Mm-hmm. Um, and life is primarily about receiving from from God. Mm-hmm. Um, amazing grace. Grace is something that you receive. Mm-hmm. You can't earn grace. You don't deserve grace. Grace is a gift, right? It's not called amazing earning or amazing effort, mm-hmm. right? The song's called amazing grace. And so life begins with receiving. Um, God did not create the world to get love. Uh, he created the world to give love, which means real life begins with receiving love. Mm-hmm. Um, we're in Genesis 1, so I'll point this out. So this is something new. Katrina and I were talking about it, and then she had me listen, and then I read some stuff. Something fascinating I've never noticed before in Genesis 1. So it's the creation account. It's a piece of beautiful poetic literature. But then on the days of creation... It says there was evening and there was morning the first day. Mm -hmm. Now listen to how I'm saying this. There was evening and there was morning on the second day. There was evening and there was morning on the third day. And this happens throughout the seven days. I'm going to say it again. There was evening and then there was morning. Mm -hmm. Well, how do we think of it? No, no. When we think about a day, what do we think? We think think morning morning and then evening. Mm -hmm. Sunrise, sunset. Okay. But in the the Hebrew mind... Mm -hmm. um, your day begins at sundown. That's right. Which, which means, okay, wait, are we supposed to work at night? No, 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 no. Night is where we have a meal with our family. Mm-hmm. You invite in the new day. Night is mm-hmm. where we rest. Mm-hmm. So in God's mind, every day begins with rest. Mm-hmm. And what do we do when we rest? When we rest, we receive. Why do we receive? Well, we don't have to work. Mm-hmm. We just bask and receive in the goodness of God Each and every day. The day starts with that Mm -hmm. at sundown. So at sundown at my house, uh, I'm learning to phone is off, you Mm -hmm. know, some of those things. And sometimes my, if my kids listen to this, my wife hears this, you're going to go, you don't do that every day. (laughs) And that's true, but I'm working on it. Well, to back you up on this, I texted you last night and it was in the evening and you didn't respond until this morning. So I knew that your phone was off and it was just a like of a comment that I'd made to you Mm -hmm. or whatever. So I I can vouch at least for the last 24 hours, Chad, you did exactly what you're saying. There's a certain time that the phone goes away. Mm -hmm. I don't even keep my phone in my bedroom anymore. Mm. Uh, Katrina does that. She puts on do not disturb on her phone. If it's an emergency, there are certain people that will still come through. Well, there's some studies that even proximity to your phone makes you dumber. Oh, really? <laughs> that, yeah. That it, just having it near you, you, you are dependent on it in a way that, that you don't think for yourself. That actually having it, and there's the temptation always to look I at do it. this. First thing, my eyes wake up in the morning. I pick up my phone and I turn it on to see what did I miss throughout the night. Like what, okay. what emails, what slacks, what whatever. Anyhow. So we live in a, uh, we have all these rabbits we're chasing. We we live in a two story house, mm-hmm. and so here's what I'm doing. My office is downstairs. Mm-hmm. I have a little. It's it's kind of more of a reading room that I have at my house. Uh, that's mine. Uh, my little space. My one little space I have in the house that I own, but that's a whole different story. Anyway, um, <laughs> uh, or that I'm responsible for paying paying for. Uh, I'm leaving my phone in my downstairs office. Mm-hmm. So when I go to bed at night, 
I put the charger in there. Mm -hmm. And so I, I can't get to my phone unless I come downstairs to, to get it. Uh, evening and morning, evening and morning. The rhythm that God wants us to experience in life from the dawn of creation mm -hmm. is rest and receiving first. Mm -hmm. And the reason that is, and just, just think with me, uh, listeners <laughs> on the podcast today, um, God wants us to receive first, and this is just common sense. We cannot give what we do not have. Mm -hmm. And so the Christian life begins with receiving. Mm -hmm. This is what grace is. It's mm -hmm. receiving. And I receive and I receive and I receive so that in the overflow of what I've received, mm -hmm. I can give and serve. And so everything in the Christian life begins with receiving. It, it all runs on, on grace. Grace is the, is the fuel of the whole thing. And so what we want to do is learn to receive love from God. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm going to go all the way there. Here, here's, here's what I'm learning. I think our greatest sin, like right now, just think to yourself, whether you're driving in the car or whether you're watching this on YouTube or whatever, what, what, what do you think the greatest sin is? And somebody's going, it's lust, right? It's adultery. It's pornography. It's, you know, some kind of perverted whatever. Or it's hatred or violence. It's murder, or, yeah. right? The Bible would disagree with you. The greatest sin is to reject the love of God. Mm -hmm. That's the only sin that cannot be overcome because it's you saying no to the reality that God has overcome all the other sin. Mm -hmm. So the greatest offense that you can do against your heavenly father is to not believe in his love for you. Mm -hmm. The greatest offense is to choose not to receive, mm -hmm. which means the thing that brings God the greatest joy and the thing that brings God the greatest satisfaction is when we live out his purpose and design for creating us, mm -hmm. which is to receive his love, uh, to trust him. And yet when we talk about God, oh, he's almighty, he's all powerful, right? And we talk about the universe and mm -hmm. Robert, you're a science geek. And, you know, we talk about all those things. We have no doubts usually in the church about his power. His power, sovereignty, all of those characteristics. And yet we doubt his grace. Mm -hmm. And yet we doubt his love. Which is. And, and, and yet we won't, we won't, oh God, I, you know, this is worse than ever. I just can't receive your grace. That is the most offensive thing we can do to him. Which let's let's skip two chapters here or let's go ahead two chapters genesis 3 that's the original sin oh it's, yeah it's i'm gonna fulfill my life with something other than god the that's one right. thing that that the temptation is okay god you've offered all of this perfection the garden of eden and yet you say but this one thing if you eat of that if you try and become you know satan's going you can become like god knowing good and evil if you eat of this fruit and they go maybe this will satisfy us in ways that god doesn't and they they reject god for something that is a counterfeit God, and that is the beginning of the fall of mankind, and here we are, and God is working to redeem, but we're living in the ripple of that rejection of God's love. I, I pictured even at the beginning of this conversation, and I've never actually seen this in real life. You see it in like movies where they stack all of the, you know, the the fancy glasses like in a pyramid or whatever, and they pour into them and they cascade down and they fill up all of it. I go, that's a picture of God's love pouring out on us, and then as we fill up, it overflows into the relationships around us. That's how God has designed it and and instead of it just pouring out and then it's done it's a it's a spring it's ongoing and and our job is to your point earlier in the series is just to drink mm -hmm. is is just to receive uh, that is the posture of christianity it's not effort and or earning it's it's receiving and then in that we work to share that with others but it starts with the gospel is news it's something we receive you don't achieve it you don't work for it you don't earn it you just open yourself up to it, mm -hmm. and, and the love of God pours in, no matter who you are, what you've done, what's been done to you. Uh, there's nothing that you've done that, that disqualifies you from receiving that love if you'd open yourself up to it. Well, the core of that original sin was the liar, the deceiver, you know, 
in the language there, it's a snake talking. Mm -hmm. And everybody's like, can you explain that? No, not really. I I don't know. (laughs) Mm -hmm. I don't know if we could communicate to animals back then in a way that we can't now. I I, I have no idea. Uh, But if a snake starts talking, I am going to check that out. Mm -hmm. Like, it's hard (laughs) not to listen. That's weird. Um, But the core of that lie is God's holding out on you. Yeah. Can't be trusted. He doesn't really love you. Mm -hmm. He's stupid, yeah, mm-hmm. and you can't trust him. And that's been the lie from the beginning. That's that's the lie today. The Every most, sin comes back to that lie at its core. The most offensive thing mm-hmm. you can do is reject the love of God. Yeah. Yeah. And so all of life begins with receiving. Um, when you were born, you didn't do anything, mm-hmm. right? Your mama did all the work. <laughs> Your mm-hmm. daddy contributed way back when, but, yep. you know, mama did all the work. You just showed up in life. Uh, and. We receive life from God that way. We mm-hmm. can't earn it. We don't deserve it. That's why Jesus says born again. Mm-hmm. Um, we receive God's love. We receive his life in us. And the most important lesson you can learn in the Christian life, in life, period, is to receive. So let's end on this. So if I'm, if I'm listening and I'm going, okay, I want to receive. I want to receive more of God's love in my life. Um, what what is something practically I can do? What is something? What is a step I take? Or maybe somebody's listening and they've never said yes to receiving the love of God in their life, and they're going, "I don't know how to do that." Um, what what would you say to that person? Well, why don't I speak to the Christians for a second? Yep. And then I would like, if you would please, Robert, you mm-hmm. you speak to those who maybe, yep, uh, this is new. Uh, if you are a follower of Jesus, I would encourage you to have moments of prayer where you're not talking. Mm. Um, let God talk. Which means you're going to have moments of prayer where you're just quiet. You know, one of the things we've been learning at Sun Valley is to pray, come Holy Spirit, Mm -hmm. turn our palms up. But just sit silently in the presence of God and allow him to love you. Mm -hmm. Uh, Just receive. Mm -hmm. Uh, If you want to meditate on a verse, you know, pick, pick a verse that talks about his love and just quote it and just quote it and just quote it. Say it out loud and then just dwell on it. Mm hmm. Or just sit there and, dude, some of my greatest experiences in prayer have been times I've said nothing. Mm -hmm. I'm sitting by a river and it's me and God and I'm just hanging out with Abba. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm just hanging out with with my Heavenly Father. Um, So that would be my counsel along those lines. Just sit in silence. Just calm down uh, and, and let him love you. And I would say to the person, and we'll end on this, if you, if you are listening and you've never received this love of God that we're talking about in your life, uh, the Bible teaches it's a gift. It means you don't have to work for it. There's no magical incantation or you got to do these things. Um, you, if I'm offering you a gift, here's what you do. You receive it and you say thank you. Um, and so if, if that's you, know this, that God has provided a way uh, for you to be in relationship with him. He's done that through Jesus. Jesus died on the cross to pay the debt of your sin, and he rose from the grave. God rose Jesus from the grave and proved that he conquered death, and he offers that life to you, and you can choose to receive that love and that life right now by putting your trust in Jesus, that his death on the cross paid the debt of your sin. His resurrection foreshadows yours. Uh, Bible teaches if we confess with our mouth Jesus as Lord, believe in our heart, God raised him from the dead, uh, we will be saved. And so uh, it starts there with receiving that that gift that God offers through the work that Jesus has done. Um, and so I'm going to pray right now. And if that's you and you want to say yes to that, uh, would you pray with me? And you can use your own words. You can use my words. Uh, would you just talk to God in, in your own heart and mind and say, God, I say yes to receiving your love. I know that I've, I've rejected that love uh, and tried to receive love in other ways. Um, I repent. I turn from that, and I say yes to the gift of your love, of new life, new relationship, uh, through faith in the work of Jesus. Uh, Jesus, thank you for paying the debt of my sin. Uh, thank you for offering me life. I say yes to receiving that life right here in this moment. Holy Spirit, would you come fill me? Uh, with your love, uh, would you teach me how to follow you from this moment forward and to follow the example and the teachings of Jesus as the leader of my life? And it's in Jesus' name I pray. Amen. 
Thanks for watching this week's episode of the Loving God, Loving People podcast. Make sure to subscribe to this channel and click the bell so that you'll never miss an episode. While you're at it, if you found value in this conversation, we'd love it if you like this video, leave us a comment, and even share it with a friend. Doing that will help more people meet, know, and follow Jesus. And lastly, you are always welcome to join us each week for one of our services right here live on YouTube. Thanks for joining us. See you next time.